I can see how you were always there So great a salvation But to you, my Jesus, what am I worth In quiet times like this I feel I get a glimpse of heaven right here on earth Why me, God? The woods, we're partying out, out in the woods uh, Around the fire, drinking some beers And uh, this, uh, this man walks out from a bush uh, he had, uh, you know, tattoos all over his body, goatee, someone like right out of a biker gang, walks up to the fire and he sits down right next to me and um, he, uh, he just started talking to me. He started talking to me about the Lord, um, Jesus Christ, um, how to come to know the Lord and be saved. And I was like, listen, I was very transparent and open with him. I was like, listen, I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a bad way. My name is Stephen Forsyth and I am 36 years old. I uh, grew up in, uh, I wouldn't say normal because, uh, well, what is normal? But normal would be, you know, you have a mom and a dad and you have a family. Um, my household growing up, uh, the first five years of my life, I lived with my mother in a trailer park. Then um, my dad asked my mom to move in with her, even though they weren't together just so my dad could be with me too. So I moved in uh, into the house where my father is now with my mom, but my mom had her boyfriend, my dad had his girlfriend, I had an uncle in the house, and it was, those, those first years were pretty, pretty wild, if you can imagine that three bedroom house having like six people in it. So it was uh, interesting to say the least. September 11th happened, 2001. Um, and that week, I just uh, walked into the Marine Corps recruiting station and signed the papers. In, uh, in the Marine Corps, was uh, I joined the reserves, which is you go one week in a month, um, in a, a couple weeks in the summer. But then, uh, so I was going to college at the same time, and uh, I was in the, uh, I joined the Marine Corps officer program. Uh, I took my pilot's exam. I wanted to fly jets for the Marine Corps. But then my unit got called up to active duty, and I didn't have to go over to Iraq, but I chose to put college and the, uh, the office officer training on hold to, uh, to go fight with my unit overseas in Iraq. Uh, I did so, um, and when I came back from the war, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I failed the P test. And from there, uh, so the pilot dream out the window, and from there, you know, I had the, it was the, the all-American dream being Top Gun, and I was on the path to doing that. Um, but uh, I guess God had a different plan. And then th things can get out of control. And then, um, you know, the, mil the, the stresses of the war and then coming back. And then, uh, and then you know, the pilot dream gone. Then, uh, you know, these, it just piles on a little bit at a time till you know, the floor caves in and, and you collapse. Whether you take uh, anything that comes from the poppy plant, whether it be uh, uh, opium, um, pills, heroin, um, like Percocets, anything that comes from that, that line of, uh, of drug, um, if you take it long enough, it, 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 uh, you become physically addictive to where you stop using it, it becomes very painful. Withdrawal symptoms from opiates, are it's uh, hell on earth it, there it's not tolerable and um you feel like you're gonna die uh, i fought the battle for several several years of um thinking like in my pride thinking i could beat it um and then you go a certain amount of time and then you know you, you go back to it back and forth i fought that back and forth game that pretty much the whole time i was in the marine corps so i'd say a good uh, five to six years of my life until um, I was to about 25. I've tried to stop using countless and countless times because I knew that, um, that I was created by God and I was put on this earth for a bigger purpose than to be addicted to some substance. You just know like you're driving to the cop spot to go get something and you're like, all I got to do is turn around right now. Why can't I do it? I know I was made for a bigger purpose than this. No one ever says when they're growing up that you're going to get stuck on, on, uh, on, a, on junk like that. But, and you always say it can never happen to you until it happens to you, and, uh, which it did. But uh, 
it was a blessing in disguise, you know? It brought me to my knees. Nights, you know, crying out to God saying, help, you know? Uh, and he, he heard my prayer, but uh, <clears throat> couldn't do it alone. Definitely couldn't do it alone. Needed the help of others. I saw that man around the fire and I went to the church. Um, one of the pastors, you know, I was standing in front of his driveway and he's like, you know, if you like where you're at in life, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing. But uh, if uh, you're not so fond of where you're at in life, well then, you know, there's, there, there's going to be, you're going to need to change. And uh, I can help you do that. He's like, so you go home now, you pack a bag, a bag one bag, and you come back. And uh, we'll, we'll get you off the, uh, we'll get you off this stuff. Had some pills or whatever in my drawer. I think I even had like a fentanyl patch that I squeezed and sucked out. And um, just took all the drugs I had, packed a bag, came back, and I detoxed on the church floor, which is a few miles down the road. And that first night, I remember I woke up and my, my, my whole body was completely, completely soaked. I've never been like this. Like, I, I just had water poured on me. I could have took off my shirt and, and wrung it out. It's like God, like, sweated all the toxins out of my body. So I woke up the next morning, and the next few, the next week or two was uncomfortable as I was withdrawing, but it was manageable, more manageable than many of the other times. I didn't sleep much that first week. Appetite was very little, but um, I was somehow able to function. My stomach was okay, um, and somehow I got th with the help of others. And eventually, I got, got through that, um, that stage, and a couple weeks later, once I was finally withdrawn and detoxed, mm -hmm. um, I came here. By God's grace and God's grace alone, uh, I called out to him many times and uh, he answered my prayer. You look around at the trees and stars and you know this planet we live on, it's evident that uh, there's a superior force behind all this. And scripture's clear, if you cry out to God with a humble heart, that he will reveal himself to you. Um, but he won't be forced to do that. You gotta take that step. Um, Anybody calls, uh, calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, you know. And God used my addiction to, to, you know, to bring me down to my knees, which helped, you know, you know helped, me, helped me lift my head up because <laughs> I, I was broken. You know, the devil roars around like a, a roaring lion uh, seeking to whom he sh shall devour. And um, if I'm not careful, um, if I were to go back and say just start, hanging out with all the same people that may be stuck in that environment and, uh, and, and, uh, and be around them enough. Sure. It's only a matter of time where, uh, I could very easily just fall back into it again. So it's, it's staying, um, in, in, in a, a kingdom minded, um, around God's people doing his work. Um, and, and that's it being around, being encouraged by each other. Because uh, uh, we weren't made to walk this alone. And we'll see what doors uh, God opens uh, up. I uh, want to have an open heart to be able to go in any direction, whichever direction that may be. Um, I do have desires to be a missionary, to, to travel the world, and, uh, maybe be a pilot one day, um, if that's God's will. Bonjour. So, Steve here. Hello, everyone. This is Matthias, and we are here in Paris. And I just want to share with you how God is placed us here in the middle of Paris. We are, what is so beautiful is that God has given us a spot right here in the direct center of one of the most international cities in the world to share his love with this world around us. Just look around. Look over there, it is awesome. Over there, awesome. And let me just show you the place. Right here. A missionary through the de denomination that I'm a part of, which is called the Christian and Missionary Alliance. They're international workers. They'll, they will be assigned to uh, a country overseas somewhere for, um, for about three to four years. Then they'll come back to, to the States for, uh, for a year um, before, they're, uh, to, to, before they uh, go back um, to that position or to another position. So I, I don't know. 
Um, the goal is to just uh, take things one step at a time. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this meal, Lord. I thank you for this time together as family. I pray that you bless this food and bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.